Hey guys, welcome back. It is your favorite gimp with a limp and I am back with a little more agar sanguinous. Uh, we're going to jump right back into it. Remember we had skipped just a little bit. Uh, I went ahead and played through the Turks turn off camera and a lot happened during that turn. I know it doesn't look like a whole lot of pieces moved, but it was intense. So I was like, eh, I'm going to go ahead and film the, the top of the seventh anyway. We we might film it uh, later, whatever. I don't care. We wanted to get into this. So uh, taking a look at it, they decided to go kind of javelin heavy, like trying to throw it out, trying to kind of push back uh, the attacks that were coming in. And you see here, 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 all of these guys were like, yep, javelins, we're throwing them all. We're trying to push these guys back. And unfortunately, it did jack squat. <laughs> they all either missed or didn't hit or they just did not have good results. It did not work out in their favor. The only result I think they got was uh, this guy got pushed backwards. Uh, there were some other attacks that they made. And I think they I played it a little too light, a little too conservative on the Turks because this guy attacked and all he was able to do is push back one infantryman. And now I'm thinking I should have pulled back with him instead because now he's open to more severe attacks. I did fix what happened over here with this because I did make uh, just the wrong result there. I pushed back the attackers instead of the defender. So that attacker attacked, trying to push this guy back again. Just he's trying to hold the building and he ended up taking a wound. So the, the results are not good for him. Uh, at this point. So they're very close to losing this building. Uh, this gentleman got stunned somewhere. I'm not sure where that happened, but he got stunned. And there was another stun over here with this horseman attacked and he just, he got a bad roll. He should have just flat killed that guy, uh, but he ended up not killing him. So that was unfortunate because now that gives us time to get back on Horsey over here and have other Horsey come around in the back and play Pokey Pokey. So that could uh, end up being very bad for him. I think I've just made some not great calls for the uh, for the Turks. I don't know. We'll have to play it again later uh, next time. I'm looking forward to playing a castle game and seeing how it works. Have a nice castle here in the center and then guys trying to besiege it with ladders and all that good stuff. But we're going to pick back up, jump into it. And uh, let's see, the first thing we're gonna do is offensive shooting. And then uh, again, no cavalry charges to really worry about because it's just so hard to work them out. There's really not a whole lot of places on this map to get the amount of straightaway that you need to get a, a cavalry charge going. Like this guy might be able to get one if that horse was one forward and some of these guys were out of the way might be able to get a cavalry charge going. You just, you have to have at least those four hexes straight ahead and then working it out. And it's just so hard to get that with all these alleyways. But the offensive shooting is the part that I didn't want you guys to miss because that's been like hit or miss. For some reason it just missed heavy. I expected the Turks, I was like, okay, let's throw all the javelins and see if we can, you know, cause some severe damage. And it was like nothing. This guy threw over here, this guy threw down here, this guy threw up here somewhere. This guy threw over there trying to like push the center back and they just got bad results. And unfortunately with the javelins, when they throw them, they're done. They're down to their short sword. But the archers over here, they do have the ability to shoot. And I think we're going to have some of these archers shooting over some doorways and in through some windows. So we're going to have this one shoot up over here and maybe these two Maybe these two shoot down over here towards this doorway. They're gonna get medium cover for shooting back there. I was thinking maybe have one fire up there, but I could potentially hit my stunned guy. That's something to consider, but yeah, maybe. Yeah, might, might go that direction. Ooh, no, because if I aim here, I could potentially hit the horse. I don't wanna hit the horse. I gotta get him back mounted, so. Yeah, we won't fire up there. We'll fire over in this direction. Have uh, our short bows and our composite bows. And I've got to go for the long shots because I want at least medium range. We'll fire crosswise or like go over here. So we'll have these two shoot towards this window. We'll have these two shoot towards this doorway down over here as our offensive fire. And again, I'm just marking them, but we're not moving them anyway. So it's not going to matter 
for our purposes. The, the, the archers are kind of hanging in the back at this point, but they've done some work this game. They have done some good work. Now that uh, I understand the, the game mechanics and the, the archers a little bit better, I might have placed the Turk archers in different places because I was thinking originally putting them here, you know, up close so they could shoot down. And that worked okay at the start, but they didn't have the best firing positions. And also having them close gave the Normans the ability to push in and just wipe them out real quick. And they pretty much took out their ranged abilities early in the game while still having their own, which is giving them an advantage. All right, so two here, two here, and it looks like I think a short bow and composite bow for each. Yep, all right, so we'll start here and we'll work our way around. All right, short bow first, firing here. One to four. Nope, that's a miss, seven. We'll put the shot there, but it doesn't matter. Effectively, he's hitting the wall. So second one is he hitting. No, got a 10. All right, so this one, firing down towards the doorway, and he's got a hit, dead on to hit him. Nope, and next one. Now, I'm on a string now of bad archery shots. Seven, okay, so all of these shots missed, but that's fine. They can still potentially fire in defensive fire, so we're not gonna worry about it. But now we've got our movement phase, and we're very close to owning this building. We own this one, we own this one. We're very close to owning this one. So they don't have to do a whole lot of movement. Movement, It's pretty much guarding, which means these guys are gonna have to push in and try to take it back. So we're not gonna do a whole lot of movement here. I'm debating on whether or not I wanna to try to infiltrate here to give better odds on it. Let's see. Let me look at my infiltration table here. The guy's wounded. So that's going to be a plus two. Wait, wait, no. The It's going to be a minus two attempting to oppose infiltration. So it's a minus two to the roll. So there's a good, 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 good chance that he can succeed. So yeah, we're going to do that. It's effectively going to be going like one, two, like that on his movement points to get to here. So this is his infiltration in the attempt to get in on this guy. And where's my die? All right, so we're gonna need, since it's a minus two, we're gonna need like a seven or under to succeed at this roll. All right, come on, decent roll, decent roll. Well, let's put it in there. I gotta put it in there. Come on. Yeah, that's good, you got it. Perfect. All right, so that's gonna be a nice dual attack coming in there, and I could try to circle him, but that would be one, two infiltration, three infiltration. So he'd have to do like three infiltration rolls. We're not gonna worry about that. All right, the movement over here. Now this is gonna be key. We're going, let's see. It's gonna be one, two, three, four, because I think it's an extra movement point to move through the dead animal. Put him there, one movement point here, one movement point here. That's gonna be considered effort. And that's what I was talking about. This guy, he attacked and he forced him back. He really should have just pulled back, maybe gone in a different direction, uh, cause now he's got a mess load on top of him. And this one, if he pushes forward, now it's gonna be negative terrain cause he'd be fighting on stairs. That's why he's hanging in that spot. Cause if someone comes up, that's negative terrain. So he gets an advantage. So he hasn't been coming down because of that. But now that leaves this open, so that's bad. Uh, and we'll go, let's see, one, two, three. We'll bring this one up just to bring it around, just so he's there, just in case. So all these guys have moved. And where else do we wanna move? Maybe bring these guys back up, because I've got this line here and honestly, I'm not that concerned about pushing it up because they're guarding. I want to kind of hold this because this is medium defensive terrain. So I don't want them to push into it. So if I push up and I'm holding this terrain, I would have an advantage from anywhere they're trying to come. So let's go one, two here. One, two, one, two. 
like that. That way they're kind of controlling the center. And we'll push these guys up the same. One, two, one, two, one, two, and one, maybe leave him there just so he can go north, south, whichever direction. And he is going to remount. So he's going to spend four movement points to remount. And this one's going to spend one, two, three, four to move up on his six. So now they've got him flanked. And I think that's all the movement. I'm still holding one cavalry guy back. They've got three and they have four. Wait, no, this side still has uh, four. They haven't lost one. They had just one get dismounted. So they're still doing pretty good, all things considered. They just got to kill him and attack there. And I think after that, it's pretty well a nice just defensive position here because they're covering here all the way north to south, right? And then they've got a wall of guys here. So they've got from here to here covered and might have to bring someone around back over there. But if they do try to encircle me, I can bring the cavalry back over to here. I don't want to pull him there just yet, but maybe I should because he can get around really quickly. So I'm thinking, yeah, he's got plenty of movement points. I go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Pull him up there. That way, just in case they come around on the six, I can come around, but I can either come back this way or come back this way, just depending on what happens. So he's in a he's in a good position there. I'm good with that. All right, I think that's all the movement we need to do. Because yeah, I could move up and attack, but I've already got control the buildings I want to get control of and considering you know the dice rolls can go against you and you can potentially lose and they've got advantageous positions here there's no reason for me to move up a light infantry guy or heavy infantry guy here and try to attack him through a doorway where he's going to get an advantage in the shift and because of the the location of the hex I can't get two people attacking at once so there's no benefit and only a, a drawback to trying to take that building the way it's set up same coming in here so might as well just kind of keep them contained. If he comes out, then he's going to get swarmed or potentially shot down by archers. So that's kind of keeping them pinned. They're going to have to come up with something, but the, the Turks are definitely at a, uh, a bad position. Maybe it would have been better to put all their guys just in the line, like right here and just swarm them as soon as they came in. All right, but you live and you learn. Let's go ahead and get our attacks going. I think it's just going to be this attack here this attack here and this attack here and this attack here so we got four attacks we got to worry about we'll go bing 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 and pop it up so we've got 20 total here two attacking them they're all on equal terrain so there's no column shifts for that there's going to be one column shift for uh two guys attacking so that's going to be 20 minus 2 is 18 18 brings us to here with a column shift down to the 21 30 table. Damn, that's really good for them. All right, let's roll, see what they're going to get. Give us that low number. Three, that's probably going to finish them. All right. E. E is one defender wounded, which is going to be a killed result since he is already wounded. So they have finally, finally taken control of that building. It took forever for them to get control of it. Mark this with a little B, just so I remember I've already done that attack. Perfect, perfect. So they've got control now, and I can pull all these guys out. Just leave this one wounded peasant here just to retain control and pull the rest of them out, maybe as like a, a rear guard for the, ar uh, the archers, something along those lines. All right, so let's do our attack here. And now we're getting an interesting attack because there's two infantry and a cavalry guy attacking. So let me do this. So that's 40 points with those two. So that's 48 minus his seven brings it down to a 41 with a column shift. So it's 41 column shift there. And train we're gonna call equal because he's got an advantage, but these guys are equal. So I think you go with the lowest. 
So definitely equal there on the train. So we got 41 with a column shift. We're against mounted. 41 would be here. So they're at the 5170 column. Damn. I think that's the highest attack I've had yet. All right, let's roll for it, see what they're going to get. Big money. No, 10 is bad. That is bad. That's going to be C. C is all defenders retreat one hex. Okay, this is going to be interesting because they all have to move and move in such a way that they can force everyone back. All right, so this guy can go here. He can just go down. Let's pull his dead body out of the way. He can go like that. And if he retreats down like this, if they can retreat around, because he can retreat back into that, which is gonna force him down. So they got pushed back. That is not good. That is not what I was expecting. <laughs> Cannot believe that roll happened. I expected that horse to get killed, but he's sticking in there. They can still get this one they can bring down potentially. They can hold this, but we still got a line. <clears throat> and it really doesn't matter. These guys don't have to go on the offensive. They just had a good chance to get a good attack there. They really just need to keep them from coming in this direction. So next attack is going to be here. He's stunned nominal defense of one. Uh, let's see, 11 plus 6 is 17. Uh, plus that's 24. Minus 1 is 23 with a column shift. So 23 is here. It's 3150. So they're pretty well perfect. Four. I think that's probably going to finish him off. I'm just going to put it right there. E, one defender wounded, and he is already wounded, so that's going to bring him to dead. So we get to knock him out of this game. So we do have control there now. That is excellent. This one guy can stand. These other two are pretty well good where they're at. They're helping to maintain uh, the line here, but they can push up if they need to. Uh, last attack that we have to worry about here is simply the one here in the back. We have this guy, but he's not going to be able to do anything because he's stunned. We do have our remounted. So 22 plus that's uh, his 30 back here gives us 52. 52 minus his 12, but he gets a plus one for being circled. So that's going to bring it down to 40. 40 plus one with a column shift. All right, so 40 here. We're going to move over one, but we're going to add one to whatever the roll is due to him being armored. All right, come on, give us good money. Let's take one of the good guys out. And dropped it. Come on, go in. Two plus one equals three. So three, bring it all the way over. We've got H. H. One rider killed and dismounted animal unharmed. Perfect. We took out their calf guy. So we can put that as such, because his horse is still alive. Let me find him real quick and I'll put his dead body there. All right, that's perfect, that is perfect. Took out their calf, now they're now they're hurt. They're, they're pretty well taken out at this point. Uh, he can pull back around if need be. Why is that counter there? Oh, that goes up there, that's one of his. Wait, no, that's one of those guys. Yeah, I think I accidentally knocked him away from the window because I think that's one of those that was up against that window. I might have been, that's right. He was pulled back here and he was guarding the doorway. Must have knocked him when I was grabbing the counter. My apologies. All right, so we killed off the uh, the horse. Killed off the cow, or not the horse, but killed off the, uh, the rider. Horse is still alive. So effectively, the horse will stay there. And if another rider were to lose their mount, they could get on that. So this guy right here, he's mounted. You can't mount anyone. So I can't just take a, a normal character, a normal infantry guy and throw him on there, even though technically in real life that would happen. You got to have stats for him. So he could run up there and mount that horse and he would be effectively mounted again. Um... I might have to kill that horse to keep them from doing that because he could run up through here, 
through the building, jump through the window and mount the horse and then get back on the offensive. He's only a light cavalry, but his stats are way, 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 way better as cavalry than they are as light infantry. All right, so we are done with the Normans. I think they have pretty well kicked butt this round. They've got control for the buildings. They're just, they're knocking it out of the park. A lot better decision <laughs> made for the Normans than the Turks. Uh, I thought the defensive advantage or defensive bonus would give them enough of an advantage so that the Normans would have a problem. But it just seems like the ability to swarm is, is key in this game. Having those extra column shifts from having two on one and then, of course, the extra attack power is really just going in their favor. So we see that attacking, obviously, two on one, three on one is really the way you want to go because otherwise you have to hope to get lucky like you do down here and force the defenders back uh, if you get a good roll. All right, but that's it. We're uh, we're about two thirds of the way done with this game. We're gonna try to speed it up just a little bit more, see if we can uh, get a couple more videos probably done for it. And then, like I said, show a few more aspects of the game. I know this has been a long series, but it's an excellent game, definitely worth uh, watching and seeing all the different little aspects of it. It's real, real fun game. I definitely recommend checking it out, especially since they've improved uh, some of the components. If you're into the uh, tactical skirmish games, especially in this era, uh, you will not go wrong with one of these games, especially considering you could do campaign uh, type games, have castle sieges. Uh, that's the uh, Montag uh, Montagasard uh, expansion, having castles, being able to climb up ladders and have archers shoot down from the parapets and all that cool stuff going on. You definitely want to check that out. All right, but put your comments down below and I will see you guys in the next one.